Frank, how are we doing? Our 19-year-old uh, daughter is pregnant with her second child. Mm. Um, my wife and I have uh, legal custody or guardianship of her first child, uh, who's now three. Um, this pregnancy was also unplanned, and so we are um, struggling to find ways to support her um, and to and to guide her because she's, you know, not really been taking advice and so on. So uh, that's where we're at. So when you talk about, um, number one, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're there for that little baby. That's awesome. I know that wasn't how y'all drew that up and y'all had a whole different plan for this season of life. And, um, it's awesome that y'all stepped up to take care of that grandbaby. Um, when you say help and support, what do you mean? What are you thinking of when you, wait, what picture do you have on how I can support my daughter when she won't listen to us? Right. So good question. So the, so with the first baby, um, she was living at home at the time. Um, and when the baby was about, I don't know, six, eight months old, um, she, she confided in us that she was having a, a really hard time, um, you know, being a mom, which is totally understandable. It's hard being a mom for anyone as, as per your first caller, you know, your previous yeah. caller yeah. and, um, and let alone uh, who, you know, a 16 year old single mom at the time. So anyway, so we, we, um, with the guidance of our family therapist at the time, we, we came up with a family plan whereby we would take care of the baby and, um, our daughter would have a chance to go back to school and get back on her feet and all that stuff. So that was the support we provided at that time. Now, since then, yeah. How'd you um, end up with custody? That that's, that means the plan didn't work like y'all thought it was going to, huh? Right. So, so, so exactly. So what happened was um, she ended up moving out of the house, um, got into drugs and so on. And so we actually went to court. She, she moved out of the house without the baby, I should say. She left the baby at home with us. Okay. So we went to court and uh, got a court order for custody, custody to be granted to us. So now is she there, is, is still there not any, at home. Is there any contingency on that or that baby's yours? Um, it's a temporary order for the next, uh, I want to say three, three or four years. Okay. Um, does she so have to work have, any sort of services to get, to regain custody or does it expire? Um, if the, what the court order says is that they will revisit the decision at okay. the, ex, the expiry of this first order. So she's got a chance to get her crap together. And if she Correct. doesn't, then they'll revisit it and then they'll stamp it for you. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Correct. Thanks. So Correct. now there's another yep. one on the way. Correct. With uh, with a different young man who mm -hmm. is, um, I would say, equally as poor performing as the first one. <laughs> poor performing. Um, you're the most, <laughs> you're the most uh, articulate father. I would have said the dude I'm, sucks, but good for you. Well, you're a I've, better person I've, than me. I've said all the words off air. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't want your grandkid to hear about his dad. You're a good man. Okay. So, well, and, and, I, and, and I know that. I don't, I don't want to trash the biological father of I love our it. granddaughter in front of her, right? I, I know better than to do that, but yeah. this this young man is 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 not much better, to okay. be honest. So does um, she want to so keep our, this baby? She, yeah, so she is, she's definitely uh, keeping the baby. She's doing August. Okay. Um, I think the due date is August 8th or something like that. But she's not living at home, and what makes this situation kind of funny, or not funny, but... Um, Messy. Messy, yeah, is that she was living uh, w with him at his parents' house, um, <laughs> but he had some sort of a nervous breakdown a couple of weeks ago. He was hospitalized for a few days uh, and then prescribed antidepressants and anti-anxiety meds, uh, at which time his mother... Uh, kicked our daughter out of the house. So she's now living in a shelter and refuses to, you know, take any of the help that us as family are trying to offer why, her. So why won't she, why would she rather be pregnant living in a shelter than come back and live at home? Yeah, that's a great question. And, you know, um, we think she she's never been diagnosed, but we think she has oppositional defiance disorder. Yeah, but hold on, I, she, I, I don't care about any disorders. Why won't sorry, she? Okay. Why won't she? She why, says why won't, we don't. Uh, why she won't she love you? We don't allow her enough freedom because she wants the freedom to come and go as she chooses and pleases to do. Okay. Um, she she like I said, she was involved in doing drugs and drinking and stuff and okay. and all that stuff and. 
every time we tried to, you know, impose a punishment or something, um, it was as, as though we were cramping her style and sure. so on. So, well, you, you yeah. were rightfully so. So is she using drugs now? No, she's clean now. She's, 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 you know, when she was telling my wife, mom, her mom, that um, she was pregnant, you know, she, she was telling her that she's quit smoking and she quit smoking weed and, and all the other stuff she was doing. So, so she um, is living in a shelter right now. When's the baby due? Correct. August, uh, August 8th, I believe. Okay. So what do you, what do you want to do? Well, you know, she's 19 now, you know, mm-hmm. so there's very little we can do. Now, um, what, what do you want to do? If you could snap your fingers, what would you have happen? I would have her move back in either with us or with her grandparents, who have also been very supportive. Mm-hmm. Um, I would want her to um, take advantage of the support that we're lending her, at least until this baby comes and until she can um, find a job and get some money in the bank and, you know, develop some sort of a foundation to live on her own. I don't have much faith that her boyfriend is going to be able to take care of them, you know? He probably won't, but when's the last time you and her just got together and went and had lunch somewhere or went and ate too much pancakes? Yeah, it's been a it's been a while. Would she do that if you called her up tomorrow and said, "Hey, let's go to breakfast tomorrow"? I'm paying. Um, Would you come? I think so. She, she might. Yeah. So do me this favor. D- don't do me a favor. My life won't change. Do yourself this favor. Okay. Um, spend a couple of days really focusing on what what you are willing to offer and what your boundaries look like. And what you would love to see happen and what is it within your power to make happen. And then write it down, show it to your wife. Y'all two do this together. Make sure everybody's on the same page. And then I want you in a low key way, no drama, no fanfare. No, this is my last stand. I want you to invite your daughter to breakfast and I want you just to check in on her, see how she's doing. How's the pregnancy going? And if your wife's the right person for this, that's great too. She can have that meet that conversation. How's your body feeling? I remember this and that. I remember when mom, I mean, when my wife experienced X, Y, and Z, like a human interaction. And then let her know, I want you to know, we'd love to have you come home. And we've had our challenges in the past. You're 19, you're grown up now. We care about you and your health and this baby's health. This is now going to be the brother or sister of the other child. And we want you to know that you're welcome home. That won't be the conversation for fights. It won't be the conversation for, for, and if in my house, you're not going to be, that's not that, this isn't that conversation. Mm -hmm. This conversation is you being the the dad, you being the grown up, saying, I miss my baby. And I want you to be safe and okay over the next six months. And if boyfriend gets his, gets well, gets his crap together, gets on a right road and a good trajectory, awesome. But I want you to know that we came after you because you're our daughter. You're still my baby girl. I need, know you're 19 and you're about to be a mother of two, but I want you to know you can come home. The time for there's no drugs in my house, the time for you have a curfew, all those, ta- those conversations, those boundary conversations, they have to happen. They don't have to happen now. And what you want to do is reestablish trust and connection with your with your baby girl. Okay, will that work? Am I Pollyanna? Probably. But here's what I want: There's gonna either she's gonna say she's gonna drop her shoulders and say thank you so much, or I'll think about it. Regardless of what happens, she's either gonna come home or she's gonna wait three or four or five more months. She's going to be real stubborn about this. She's gonna find somebody else to move in with. She's gonna find some situation. And here's what I want her to have. I want her to have experiences, letters, first person breakfast accounts, whatever, that my dad kept coming for me. He kept coming for me and he kept coming for me because there's going to come a moment when she's going to hit rock bottom. There's going to come a moment when she needs a warm bed and she's going to remember that guy loved me. 
or she's going to have this baby and six months in, she's going to be so exhausted, so tired, so fill in the blank. And she's going to remember, okay, that guy loved me. Because you're dealing with a child, right? She's a kid. She's 19, yeah. right? And so give her a legacy of that. And if she says no, say, cool, let's go to breakfast again. Let's do breakfast every Saturday. Or me and mom are going to alternate every Saturday until this baby's born. Just because we like you. You're our daughter. And all you're trying to do is not win, not establish boundaries, not est- make sure, fill in the blank. You're just trying to reestablish trust with your daughter. If she says no, she says no. Say, great, I'm going to try again next week. And this is going to be real hard for you and your wife. Because there's probably going to be rejection. There's probably going to be frustration. You're going to see... She's going to gain too much weight. Not She's going to lose a bunch of weight. She's not going to be healthy. She's not going to look like she's showered. It's going to be really hard. And you all have to be the super adults here and keep going back and going back and leaning in and leaning in. Or the alternative is you can cut her off. Say, best of luck to you. I wish you well. Well, we don't want to do that. That's right. And I was going to tell you, brother, I, I couldn't do that to my daughter. Right. Right. Now I'm going to have my boundaries and I don't want, I don't want you to hear me say, man, she just gets to run r- rough shot over you guys. No, this is a prodigal son. Mom. This is like, man, come home, come home. Right. And I also know that when a teenager gets something in their head that is not accurate, but that it gives them an opportunity to pit themselves against their family, man, I'm going to cut through all that nonsense. Right. I'm going to cut through all that crap. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be a part of that. This is the moment you get to come home. Right. Um, when I say that, how does that sound, Frank? Um, yeah, I, I, I think it sounds it sounds fine. Um, you know, we've we've definitely expressed that, the you know, the porch lights on and the door is open, uh, but not in in such an intentional manner, like like what you're like what you just described. So I think we can tr- we can try to continue expressing that uh, in the way that you just described. So do you guys do y'all do y'all laugh happy. together? When's the last time y'all laughed together? Uh, well, she was over at, when she actually told us like three weeks ago. She was over to visit with her daughter and visit with the family, and you know we had a movie night and popcorn and had a good time then. And that's actually when she felt comfortable enough to tell us what was mm. going on. So yeah. So. She's a, a 19-year-old mother of two. She's an adult in the eyes of the law, and she's a kid. Right. And if this, <laughs> this may not work in every family. I've got a family with a deranged sense of humor. But if this is me, you know how, what my first line would be? Well, we gave you a bunch of curfews and rules. <laughs> 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 that didn't work. So come on, right? I mean, we, there's, a, there's an entryway to this to be funny. There's an entryway to this to be really loving. Yeah. Here's another beautiful thing. If you write her a letter so she can read it when she leaves, a great thing 18, 19, and 20-year-olds are, are, are good at doing is feeling really good in the moment. They get uncomfortable later on in the day and the week with those feelings. Like, wait a minute, I'm supposed to hate my parents because they're ruining my life. And I mm. felt a sense of love for my dad. I got to come up with some fill in the blank, right? If you write her a letter, she can go back to it and go back to it and go back to it. So when she leaves, the letter will have nothing about rules. Those will come. The letter will have nothing about, you know, you should have known better. None of that. The letter will just simply be, you are my baby girl. And I would love it if you came home. I want you to always know that we love you. Your mom and I love you. We drive you crazy and you drive us crazy. Tag, you're, we're both hit, right? But you and this new little grandbaby are going to have a place to go. Be hyper-intentional. Be with, not at. This is a mother of two, man. Right? This is a mother of two. Be with, not at. And I hope, man, I'm so hopeful that you can come in humbly. If there's things you need to apologize for, if you raise your voice, yell, acted like an idiot, this is that moment for you to go first. Be humble. And just say, hey, because the goal here is reconnection. The, not goal, the goal here isn't to lecture. Right? The re- goal here is safe baby and grandbaby. The goal here is not to win an argument and to establish those boundaries. Those will come. This is the moment for connection. Dude, I love your heart, Frank. Let us know how that conversation goes. Let me know. I'm, dude, I'm, I'm going to be thinking about this one. Let me know how that conversation goes with you and your daughter, how that breakfast goes. And, man, if she comes back, moves back in with you guys, we'll cheer you on. And if she doesn't, we'll cheer you on anyway, man. Thank you so much for that call.